Hi guys, it's Keanu again. Click the thumbs up, subscribe, and ring the bell. Bye! You are now listening to The Re-Education Podcast. podcast guess what i'm bringing to you this week three amazingly beautiful talented black females and i'm just gonna let them jump straight in and introduce themselves hey i'm nelly alessa the confidence coach and career strategist who helps professionals own their worth get the career of their dreams and become the bosses of their own lives Hi, I'm Lola Fayemi and I am a leadership coach, um, founder of an organisation called Boss Ass Living um, and a transformation specialist. And I work with mostly women. I help them to break cycles. I'm all about people who are pioneering new ways in their lives, their business, their families, helping them to step into their sovereignty, live their truth, not their conditioning, so they can do what they came here to do. If people listening aren't already motivated and inspired, I just, I, I don't know. Hi everyone, I'm Audrey, Audrey Cairo. Um, I'm a life and a career coach. Um, this said, I recently transferred a bit more of my, or been expanding a bit more, and I'm um, coaching uh, women with vaginismus, which is a condition um, that women have, and I'm coaching them to gain more confidence while they're being challenged by this condition. I have free amazing beautiful talented black females for you like i just need to give you all just (laughs) so i'm not sure if you guessed it but they all all three of my guests mentioned that they are coaches and this is going to be a conversation on representation in the coaching community and we're looking specifically at black women so ladies, thank you for joining me. Like it's Nelly, welcome back to the Re-Education Podcast. Second thank time you. now. <laughs> Lola, welcome. Audrey, welcome. Thanks um, for having us. I mean, I, I couldn't I couldn't not have one of these real powerful round tables or round screens, because we virtual, it's lockdown 2.0. <laughs> but I just wanted to to bring three amazingly talented black female coaches and have a conversation around the topic of representation. So I wanna really kick off with asking, what does the term representation mean to you when we look at coaching and what you do? And I'm gonna start with Nelly. Representation to me means what is possible. Seeing myself and what I can become a lack of of representation unconsciously, I believe, does the opposite. Because if you don't see someone that looks like you and and the heights that they can achieve, it's hard to to dream. It's hard to actually envision yourself on a higher and um, more influential level. So that's why I believe in the power of representation and seeing more black women coaches in higher positions being visible because it has power and it sends a message on who we can be and how amazing and what we can become. And I just want to let people know that this conversation is about bringing three different perspectives from three black, powerfully talented black females and I, I, I'm, I'm always intrigued to hear what words and what terms mean to people. So thank you for sharing. Yeah. Lola? <clears throat> so I'm different. I've always got a different opinion to everyone, haven't I? But um, <laughs> I'm not a big <laughs> fan of the word, if I'm honest with you. I don't like the word representation. There's a lot of words I don't really mm. like, if I'm honest. This, this feels stale to me. But I understand the concept, of course. Um, and, and I get it. It's important. People need to see people like them um but for me it's not just about color because i don't necessarily um a black woman in coaching might not be 
sim- I might not relate to her still. You know, there's more to me than just the color of my skin. So it's about having, I mean, obviously I, <laughs> there are some black women in coaching, not a lot. Okay, so usually it's me, um, if I'm in the room, and then in another room, there's another one. But, um, <laughs> you know, there has been some times, very rare times where I've been in the room, and there's been a few others, and I haven't necessarily felt like, oh, this is, these, this is my peeps, because we're not a monolith. There isn't one story. So um, for me, the racial representation, because visually it's great to see your own, but for me, it's also, I'm big on like decolonization, really. So sometimes people present black, but actually they're very colonized in their thinking still. And they're still very, uh, rest- I'm into the real kind of liberation thing. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I won't be drawn particularly to that woman, I'm afraid. And I just want to say, it's interesting that you mentioned that, you know, that yes, there may be other black women in the room or around you in the same area as you, but they're not you. Like we all bring something different to the table. And, you know, as as sad as it is that most people sometimes, most people from different communities, when they see one, they kind of say, okay, well, that's how all black women are. Okay, well, that's all black women's experience. Which which can really play a detrimental part on us being able to come in and be our authentic self and present something different from a black perspective i want to see i basically want to see lots you know i want to see lots of us is really what Mm. i'm getting at i want to see variety and i want to see range that's Mm. what i want to see yeah yeah. not just the one or two here and with people trying to shove you in a box like oh you're a black coach you should Mm. be (laughs) you should be like this person or whatever i don't know i don't like that I need yeah. more choices. But see, that's, I love your point, Lola. And if I may say something on this, and I think that's why there is power in being seen. I think mm-hmm. representation is, I see it as visibility. Okay. Mm-hmm. When you go to high positions uh, or positions of influence, I don't really see a lot of black women coaches. I haven't. I work in, I've been working, had the privilege of working in leadership development for seven years. And the pool of black coaches I have not seen, I have not seen anyone who looks like me. No one. So the, the point of representation, and I think it's, it's important to highlight, we're talking about good, positive, empowering representation here. We're not talking about yeah. the stereotypes. But there is so much negativity in the media showing negative representation that we need to counterbalance by us being more visible, us being our authentic self and bringing our best so that the people, even the young girls or whoever who may not have the confidence or not knowing how or what they can achieve, look at us and say, actually, this is possible. Mm. I think there is power in the in representation, in visibility, and there is also an impact in lack of visibility because then if we don't see us we don't really have a voice so i think it's very important for us to be bold and step into our own greatness our own purpose to be the coaches the entrepreneurs the the boss ladies that we need to be so that we set the scene and we set the tone of what a black woman is and what she can be Mm. It's, it's so funny, though, because, like, I feel I fall in between the two of you, really, like, with my opinion, because, or, like, because if I thought about the word representation, um, like, I'm Dutch, I was always the only black girl in from kindergarten or till high school, um, and I came or, you know, I studied in Amsterdam and that was really when the moment came from more people like me that I could see in a way and then coming to London. Um, but the word representation, of course, because English is not my first language, the word reason, representation is not really on the forefront as what you said, like to me, Lola, like to me, it's, it's a word that I was like, oh, I have to think about that now. How do I like what how do I feel about it? Because. I wasn't really represented anywhere for a lot for a large part of my life and 
uh, so I haven't necessarily been looking for representation either because that wasn't necessarily in like you know besides of my home and my family uh, around me um, I had a strong woman there you know and that was my mum but then I wasn't necessarily looking for representation somewhere because I was already assuming I was going to be the only one really mm -hmm. I was already the one that was repre representing but me but as me you know not per se as a, a, a black woman or the black community just me as me because that's what I had to that's what I had to be most part of my life really um, mm. and then now of course since uh, this since lockdown since uh, what happened with George Floyd since I'm like uh, working in an organization where there might only be like two black women in a pool of 30 something coaches then representation became a different thing in a way because then it was then it was all of a sudden as well looked at oh how many black people are actually in our team and then i am the representation right um so and that was a very interesting conversation that i've had with the owner of the company but also the fact that for myself i had to be thinking about that like even when black panther came out for example don't get me wrong i wasn't like a big fan of the film itself Ooh. i have to say sorry but what made me think at that time was like i was thinking back about women on screen and who i always loved and then i was thinking mm. i never thought about it until that moment that i was like who did i associate with and it was like storm of the x-men which is actually a marvel film which is the one i do love but then again <laughs> when i was thinking of black panther i forgot her name like the late the woman with the bold like the warrior right mm. and i was oh, like yeah. oh my god if i was a teenager or a young kid i would have wanting to see her and i would yeah. have likely been her right but that was the moment when i thought about representing on screen representing yeah. but then that could be like for me i was looking at them as well with the strength as well and mm. of course the color of my skin but i never thought of myself as that person as i am representing because i was never re i was representing just me in the little mm. village i lived in for most of my life Really? I think you're making a really important point, Audrey, mm. because even though I was in London, I grew up in South London, I'm 42. So when I grew up, there wasn't as many um, black people around in South London as there are now. We were definitely in the minority. So <clears throat> my experience has always been from birth to just be in the minority. So there's an element of that which I'm kind of just used to. And what I've found is... Um, I mean, I didn't need representation personally, just, but that's just my nature. I, you know, I, I work with pioneers now. I'm always kind of like, I don't, you know, I don't want to, I, I want to set my own path. Mm. But at the same time, again, this year, you know, big, big year, big changing year. And so what I feel like I've become more aware of is the importance of showing up. Mm. I, I've always kind of been aware of that, you know, that kind of thing of, okay, there aren't a lot of me around. So I just need to kind of show up as just as like, this is possible. Like you can, there are other options. Because I appreciate a lot of people do need that, don't they? They need to mm. see something that they can then aspire to. Um, but yeah, I hear you on the Black Panther. I cried all the way through that film. And so even though that was my upbringing and that was what I was used to, there was a level of something because my body was also telling me something else when I was watching that film of like, oh, you know, I think there's been on the yeah. screen. I think there's been a lot of realizations. Yeah, I think for, for yeah. there have been a lot of realizations about representation mm. in that sense. I think, like the conversation I've had regarding coaching and regarding being like one of the two black coaches in the team, um, like all of a sudden that became like you know all the things that I tried to not think about in a specific way came all in one go mm. onto my plate really like from tough conversations from if i'm here to represent uh, not only as a black woman but actually just like you know like or a, a black person and a black woman like all in one in the, in a team like it just really felt as if it was all of a sudden all eyes on me kind of mm. thing and that was something that uh, there was a month of me going through emotional roller coaster figuring out of 
like I know like thinking back about those times of when you were always the only person mm. you know where it's been of course a lot of uh, conditioning in a in a way of to put that away to be able to function normally in life so that you you know I've always called myself the a horse with blinkers on so if someone wants to ins insult me they have to stand in front of me right if they're standing on the side or behind me i won't see them so if you want to insult me for who i am then you have to really be here because otherwise i'm not gonna take it in right and that's a bit of how i've how i've gone through life but it's worked for me personally until let's say this summer yeah. right where i had to be well, the world the changed. had to come up yeah. yeah well the world changed we're not on island mm. i think there's yeah. a I'm a coach and a systems coach. So we're not just, I know it's great and it's wonderful that we can do everything we want and, and do all this stuff with our minds and our hearts and all this stuff. But we also are working within these systems. They're like internalized within us. So the world changed, the backdrop of the world changed this year. Therefore yeah. we changed, Yeah. you know? And I think that, yeah, we had our coping strategies from the old world, didn't we? And then this year it was like, oh no, we need new ones. They're not, Absolutely. the rules have changed. Suddenly everyone wants to talk about it. No one wants to talk about it before. Shh, yeah. don't talk about it. Mm -hmm. People that can't see it, they can't see it. Don't mm -hmm. talk about it. Don't create trouble. And then suddenly everyone wants to talk about it. Yeah. I think, I think a lot of it has, has been exposure. Things have been exposed. They were always there, but now it's been exposed. And what I love about this, this conversation so far is two points that really resonate with me. Number one, representation starts with ourselves. So we, we are our own representation. I believe in purpose. I believe in individuality. I believe in being our best selves. That's really my mantra and how I live my life. So I don't need permission to be who I am. Whether I'm the only black woman in the room or not makes no difference. I'm still going to show up and show excellence. However, there is power in visibility. When I think about Michelle Obama when President Barack Obama got elected if that was not the power of representation then we need to have another conversation we need to realize that as a black community the stereotypes the stigma the trauma that we have had to go through and continuing to go through because this year has showed us the real realness of what's really going on and I say to people if you were not woke before I hope you woke now. So seeing Michelle Obama, classy, intelligent, beautiful boss at a presidential level was new for us. We haven't seen that before. And that's what I mean by the power of representation. We can be our best self. We can believe in ourselves and absolutely we should. But there is power in being seen. There is power in being excellent there is power in showing up because we have to remember we're being watched by everyone everyone's watching you don't know the little girl that's watching when we saw kamala harris being the first woman of color mm. as vice president that again sends a message again representation so i think it's, it's very important i think to to understand that that psychology but also understand that this starts with us whether we're the only black person in a room or hundred, we show up as our own indiv individual selves. We show up as our best selves first, as people. And I love what you said, Lola. It's not, I know we, we are black, beautiful black queens, but it's not just about color. I personally don't put myself into that box. I'm Nelia Elessa. I'm coming as an individual. I'm coming with everything that I have. God has blessed me with that melanated skin. So this is what you're going to get. God has blessed me with, and I'm from mm -hmm. Paris, so I love what you said, Audrey. When you come also from a different country, <laughs> you have a different perspective. In France, I was always really the only one, and I was so used to it. And to be honest, it's a privilege, because I think I'm the first, since I'm the first you have seen, let me set the tone for you. Let me show you what this looks like, so that mm -hmm. whoever comes after mm -hmm. me can also really have... Um, that platform so i i see it that way but i guess my point is individuality purpose and at the same time understanding that there is power in visibility and there is power in representation 
I love that. I love what you just said. And I think that helps me sort of clarify my thinking of, I think I feel like we're always visible and we're always representing. And I think mm. there's that, I always have that awareness. So I think that's what I don't like about the word. Cause then it, because it's like mm. when I come sociable, mm. I can talk to anyone, I can build rapport really quickly. Put me in a networking room. <sighs> Yeah. <laughs> you know i'm like now i have to like, i don't want to do it now <laughs> hello they're networking now <laughs> but it's um it's kind of like representation i suppose is then just showing up isn't it it's mm. showing up as you mm. i've had a, i've always had a bit of a bee in my bonnet around you know the, all the negativity that we know about some people i do like black like people i do feel to myself like what exactly are you doing to not feel this narrative because sometimes the people yeah, that moan, yeah. moaning the most i'm like Did, and you your life as an example because i'm about life as message yeah, yeah. Like, it's not, i'm about authenticity <laughs> i'm not about like i walk my talk i am the same here as i am you know i'm the same everywhere you know me yeah so it's kind of your life is a message don't, don't be going and doing all the things that they expect us to do that's so lazy they want you to do that they rigged the that's system right. for you to do that and you're just doing it and they're moaning about it. Mm. Yeah. And yeah, and not even trying no, to change. Not my peeps, respect, break the system. do your thing. But I'm very much a stay in my lane kind of girl. There's work mm -hmm. to do, you know what I mean? There's so, work to do. There's yeah, work to do. on that. I love that. Oh, this, this already, I'm just like, oh my God, <laughs> just so amazing. <laughs> Thank you guys for sharing um, just what that term means and then, you know, engaging in, in conversation together. Audrey, you mentioned that you're Dutch, you wasn't born here and you was always, you're used to being the only one. I'm really keen to know, like, what was your introduction to, to coaching itself? Yeah, like my introduction to coaching was actually here in, in, in London um, because I, or to be honest, like I feel like I've always worked with, with people um, in general, but when I, in my last job, I was working in media recruitment and um, it wasn't the, the job that I was planning to stay in because I landed, I, like my background is uh, TV production, um, but then I ended up in media recruitment in the end. Um, so it was a bit of a, uh, what am I gonna do now and what do I know best, right? Mm. And for me, it was always people because every job I've had, if it was researching people's stories, if it was my 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 actual studies, it all had to do with people's stories, and um, and even in recruitment, it was about finding people and making them, you know, the best they could be. So uh, my introduction was actually being like, what profession fits that bill? And mostly because of the people who I was talking to, they were like, oh, you should become a therapist or you should become a, a coach because I wasn't giving them always a job. I was actually just helping them to realize what it was that they might wanted. So I was getting like, uh, you know, the feedback wasn't about thank you for that job. It was really thank you because now I don't want to go for this job. And I decided <laughs> to go for my, my dream. So, um, so I literally just started talking to coaches and I asked all my friends to send me um, details of the people they know that coached them before because I was not sure what it was. Mm. Um, even though the idea sounded nice, but I didn't really know what it actually was. So, um, so yeah, so that's how I, so I had a lot of conversations um, in the beginning and I just wanted to see who was a coach, what it is that they did or what kind of trainings. Um, and it was really interesting. I've had so, so many lovely conversations. And again, actually there was the, the, the person who got me to sign up for what I signed up for was uh, the sister of one of my closest friend, friends and she's Bayesian and she was like oh you know it's like she was a she's a coach too so and she was like oh you know if I would if I would retrain I would go start there and there and and I listened to what she said in that sense because it all like all the pieces of pieces of the puzzles fell together mm. um, so it was more of a where am I gonna go mm. you know like and what do what do I do what do I think that I would love doing um, so the coaches that you spoke to, um, mm -hmm. you mentioned that the, your friend's sister, yeah. she's Bayesian, so she's black. <laughs> For those yeah, who don't yeah. know what Bayesian is, listening in, it's <laughs> people from, you're from, they're from Barbados in the Caribbean, mm -hmm. <laughs> referred to as Bayesians. 
<laughs> the other coaches, I'm, I'm just curious to know, like, what was the ethnic ethnicity? Or what was they the were, race? They, the were, they were male, female, white, mm. like different ages, like uh, actually gay, straight. It was literally, let's say, if I would have spoken to anyone, I would have spoken to anyone. It was more of a, it would have been, who do I trust that have been coached and that they would value their coach? So I've spoken to their, the, the people who I, so my friends, like they given me their coaches that they valued mm -hmm. in a way. So it was more of that type of conversation. So I felt that they had gotten value out of that. And then my friend's uh, sister, um, you know, like I always trusted her already. So it was more of a, an, a, an added bonus that she would actually literally rephrase of saying, if I would do my journey again, I would have gone there and there. And I'm like, who would say that? You know, if someone mm. could start over and they will just point you in the right direction. Um, yeah, that's yeah a no, long, that's, that's that was a long beautiful. answer. No, 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 don't worry. It was, that, that, I mean, that's beautiful. The fact that you spoke to Pete, your friends and you got advice and you spoke to people who they trusted and were the best fitting people to to kind of mm. help you navigate that he was kind of coached by a bunch of coaches to become a coach yeah <laughs> and, and this was a really interesting conversations right because like no one was trying to get me like I wasn't asking to be coached I was just wanting to hear their journey mm. and um so there was yeah it, it was really just supportive conversations of you know here's all the information do whatever you want to do with it you know, so it wasn't a sales pitch or something mm. from anyone. No, oh, that's lovely. Lola, I've known you the longest here, oh. but I don't actually know your introduction to coaching. Yeah, I, so I, I trained as a coach way back in 2007. Mm. And I basically, I did, all, I did all the things I was supposed to do in life. You know, I ticked all the boxes I got the education I got a really good job I was earning good money I was always very driven and ambitious and then I was just empty <laughs> I was just really empty and unfulfilled but I didn't know that fulfillment I mean I didn't even know fulfillment was a thing to be fair um and so I had a family situation that happened and everything kind of just it was a wake up so it was my first wake up and it's, I've got this, um, I'm quite intuitive, so I've got this sort of knowing, and it's weird, when the shit hits the fan, it comes on. So the knowing that came on the time was like, oh, okay, well, I thought I had that sussed, you know. I was really on, on the track. I thought I knew everything, and I clearly don't, <laughs> because this is, I've created this thing, and I don't like, I'm trapped in this life that I don't like. Um, and so I was kind of like, I need to throw it all out and... I had that real knowing of like, don't assume you know anything. You clearly don't. Mm -hmm. What you know has created this. We need to do something different. So I went off to look for fulfillment, really. I didn't even know if it existed. That's how, I know it sounds so pathetic now, but it's like, I didn't even know if that was possible because I didn't know anybody that was fulfilled. I knew plenty of people that were well off and, you know, um, successful under that. Going through the motion. Know, yeah, I don't even know the phrases anymore. I call it... Um, muggles <laughs> so it's like in the muggles um I'm not a muggle so um I tried it doesn't work for me so I I went through some stuff I was kind of like really questioning and I was speaking about it because I've always been very transparent and I got quite depressed actually and I used to speak to people and everyone would say, oh, yeah, that happened to me or that happened to this person. And I used to think, why is nobody talking about this thing if everyone's going through it? Um, and then when I came out the other end of it, I was kind of like, I don't know what that is, but I feel like I want to do that. Whatever that is, I want to do that. I want to speak to people about the real stuff that they're just keeping under the carpet for some reason. Because mm. um, I genuinely thought I was the only one on the planet. That's how bad it was going through this thing at the time. I didn't know there was a whole industry. I didn't even know there was self the self-help industry. <laughs> I was just like, how can everyone else do this? I can't do this. I can't keep doing this. Um, thankfully, I wasn't alone. <laughs> it was a lot more common. And then I just ended up training as a coach. Um, I picked CTI to do my course. I did a bit of research. That felt like the, the best one. And it felt home. The first day I got there, it felt home. Like, in a, 
in a way that I'd never felt before. But it was like, ooh, it was very synchronistic. It was very like flow. It was just the kind of signs that you get when you're like, okay, I'm doing the right thing. Um, and then I started and I've always been a really big, so I trained as a coach, but I'm always, I'm a, I love learning, I love development. And so I do a lot of my own work, a lot of inner work. But at the time I was, yeah, definitely there wasn't anyone black there. Yeah, I can't remember there being anyone black. Um, same as Audrey. But, you know, it, it wasn't until years later that it, I even recognised that. I thought I should go to a conference, the ICF conference. You know, one of the coaches that I really adore, Laurie Shook, was presenting. And I thought, oh, do you know what? I'll go to the conference. That feels like a good idea for me to do if I'm running this coaching programme. And I got there. And I remember just when I, oh, my God. <laughs> I never realised before how white coaching is. I was just like, what have I been, where have I been? Why have I not noticed this before? <laughs> and it was like years later, um, you know, like to, probably about like 2015 or something. And it was just like, and, and for me, that makes it dry. I'm going to just be, I'm going to be real. Okay. That makes it really dry for me. Mm. Okay. Um, I find it boring because it's all the same. There's a, there's a narrow thing. There's a narrow sort of lane within, within which people are operating and it doesn't work for me. Like I'm bigger than that lane. Like I have more color and energy and, and no wonder they're always saying that, <laughs> you know, when you suddenly realize that's why they say that all the time. Oh my God, your energy. Oh my God, your passion. It's because they're all like, ah, mm. That makes me laugh so much. Yeah, yeah, it's like, oh, that's the reason why they're saying it to me too. It's because <laughs> we're black. It's the melanin. <laughs> you know, but it's, um, yeah. And I think that it's important to have, again, I'm not a big fan of the word diversity neither, but difference. You need a lot of different types of people doing things. You need, um, it's boring. Mm. It's boring otherwise. We were talking a couple of weeks ago, actually. I said to you that I didn't want to share too much with, in the conversation because I wanted to, to share it here. But my introduction to coaching technically was watching some... I feel I was watching a reality show and it's like they had a life coach and this person was rich in the industry. Life coach. Okay, that's something that rich people have. Cool never really been introduced to it in like my day-to-day -day jobs and just growing up in South London. It's not really a thing that, oh yeah, I've got a coach. I've got a coach. When you say coach, football is what I would think of. Um, and then I started working for an organization and I was based in, in prison. Lola, I was absolutely like mesmerized <laughs> by the way you show up at work in like your complete authenticity and the fact that you was a coach you was a black woman you're nigerian like me i was like what are we doing this thing or what <laughs> okay i can get down with this the way you line manage the way you support you just have this effortlessness when it comes to facilitating a conversation to help somebody fully do that inside look inside and okay so what, what is the problem and i always remember every time we had a one-to-one -one, it's like what, what do you need what do you need i've never been asked that in any situation <sighs> not even in labor what do you need like oh, nobody, <laughs> they don't ask you that <laughs> they tell you breathe <laughs> you you'd always tell me what do you need and and i really want to thank you for introducing me to a world that I had no idea existed. And I feel that I'm really drawn to women that are authentically, unapologetically themselves, no matter where they are. And mm. that's what drew me to, to Nelly as well. But the fact that I got to work with you, you were my line manager, you're very supportive. Just seeing, like, for me, you embodied representation. Because it wasn't even that you're a coach. It was you're a black woman in a position of power and I respected that a lot and I, I just I wanted to let you know that especially here because I want everybody I'm going to say the world because this is going global <laughs> speak, it, here, <laughs> speak it to existence girl <laughs> just 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 thank you and it's gotten me to the place that I am now that people like yourself 
Bob, like you, you really don't know the impact that you fully have. But I just, I just want to show that I wasn't, I don't even feel like I was that young, but as a young black female looking up to another black female, it just, it, it's helped me. And I feel that it's really projected me into where I am in, at work, where I am personally, like I'm currently doing a second coaching course and I'll have a diploma in transformational coaching, like probably Amazing. early next year. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank Amazing. you. Amazing. It's just, and I do it for the aspect of representation. You yeah. know, the, the, the young people that we work with, they all look like the three black males that we have <laughs> as an organization. And there's so many of them, like, it's just, I just, yeah. I know the beauty that coaching can have for young black females in school, whether it's primary, secondary school. And I just feel that the power of coaching can really touch, transform and impact the lives in which young, well, black people period live. The work that you do, um, Lola, especially around like fully understanding the conditioning that we've gone through, that what's passed on through our families and generational. Absolutely. You know, it's breaking, like, no, acknowledge that this is something, this is unhealthy and this is passed on to us, you know? If I had that at the age of, I don't know, 17, 18, or even 16, I probably feel that I would be where I am now, probably earlier in my I'm not going to ask to go back and do that again because I'm thankful for the journey that I've been through. But mm -hmm. I just know the impact that black women like yourselves on this episode right now can have on other young black girls. And I like to think that I've got my, my, my stuff together to an extent. And um, I'm really, yeah, I really just want to thank, I want to thank all of you, Nelly, the real important work around self love, like, like you said, representation starts with us. We've got to do that inner work. And coaching yeah. is a tool that can help support that process. But I, I really just had to get it out there. And, and I, I, honestly, I, I commend each and every one of you. If I could give you a, 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 an award, I really would. Because Audrey, because you're from Holland, like you still represent a black woman. Mm. You represent a black woman that may not have been born in the UK, but you're still a black woman. It's only because you work in the UK why you would want to have that kind of similarity and that thing in common with the, the I guess, the women or clients that you work with here, but you still represent, each of us here right now in this episode, we all represent four unique, different, talented black women. And we represent, like we show up. When we're in the room, we show up and we show out. People just, some people are not really used to confident black women. Oh, well. All the time. That's too but bad. <laughs> as, as we know, it's not our problem. You don't need their permission, so. <laughs> <laughs> you just preached my message. That's why I love the, the topic of confidence. That's why I love being a coach, full stop. I think being a coach is, is actually a way of being. Mm, absolutely. Um, I believe I was always a coach, mm. but I discovered that I was Hi a coach. Hi guys, it's Keanu again. You're listening to the Re-Education Podcast.